Today we're going to be talking about Osgood Schlatter's disease. What is it? Who gets it? And how do you treat it? Welcome to Ortho Eval Pal, where we help you build confidence in your orthopedic evaluation and management skills. Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. My name is Paul Marquis, your host, and today we're going to be talking about an interesting little topic called Osgood Schlatter's disease. Now, before I get started, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, I want to shout out and give a big thank you to all the people who have been listening to our podcast. We have had um, some really good showing and also hearing a lot of great comments about our YouTube channel and getting good comments about different diagnoses. So I'm really happy about that and uh, thanks for following. For those of you who are just starting on with Ortho Eval Pal, uh, a little bit about ourselves. Uh, we are here to try to get back to the basics of orthopedic evaluations so that we can be a little more effective and a little more efficient when it comes time to doing uh, evaluations, seeing we are so short on time nowadays with patients. And getting that diagnosis correct the first time is really instrumental in keeping costs down so we're not excessively utilizing uh, special tests and diagnostic imaging and that type of thing. And a lot of these diagnoses, like you're going to see today uh, on Osgood Slaughters, that uh, you really don't even need to do any diagnostic testing. It's really all clinical. And um, so we'll have some fun today talking about uh, how you get it and uh, how do you treat it. So let's, let's just talk about a, a patient I recently had. She's about 14 years old. And um, in northern Maine here, most kids who play sports are three sport athletes. They play soccer, basketball, and tennis, and or maybe some cross-country running, track, and uh, softball, baseball. But most of them are three sport athletes. So this young lady comes in. She's 14 years old, tries to play soccer this year, and she just cannot do it. She has severe discomfort in the front of both knees and just cannot continue playing. We tried resting her a little bit, tried a little bit of therapy, and she just could not. It was just too painful for her. And she had Osgood Slaughters. So what I'm going to talk about today is, you know, how do you get it, who gets it, and how do we treat it? So we'll talk about what we did with this young lady and uh, how successful she is now in her second season, which is basketball. So what is Osgood Slaughters, first of all? Well, it typically happens in, in young athletes between 10 and 15 years old. Usually you see this more in males than you do in females, um, but I do see it almost equally in both. And the problem with Osgood Slaughter is, is it's, a, it's an excessive overuse of the quadriceps pulling on the patella tendon and then causing an irritation at the tibial tubercle. Now you need to remember, when you're 10 to 15 years old, that tibial tubercle is all new growing bone. It's at the growth plate. So it puts a lot of pull on there, just like you grabbing a hold of the skin on your arm and giving a pull on it, it, it makes kind of an outgrowth. And as the body tries to heal that up, it heals it into kind of a spur or an exostosis, an excessive amount of bony outgrowth in that area. And they can be very, very tender to touch and, and extremely painful for if you're doing cutting or sprinting or jumping activities. You never see this in couch potatoes, all right? We see this in almost exclusively in athletes or in young people who do a lot of heavy work that requires a lot of squatting or jumping off of things. And uh, so it's, it's quite a, a common problem and unfortunately very debilitating and very painful. But it also happens in, mostly in athletes. And these athletes are usually quite aggressive and they want to continue their sport. And unfortunately, you have to slow them down sometimes. So this is an inflammatory condition. It can be quite painful. It comes from a lot of overuse. And usually see in teenage males more than females, but like I said, I see it pretty equally. So what do you do with these? Okay, what do you do with these folks who have Osgood Slaughter's disease? And so what we did with this young 14-year-old is we basically told her you, you can't keep playing soccer. It's irritating it, it's causing too much trauma to that tibial tubercle, and we need to slow you down. We need to give you relative rest. Now, it's important that you have parents sitting in on this conversation because typically you don't have a hard time convincing the athlete to slow down. Sometimes it can be even more challenging to convince the parent that the athlete needs to slow down and decrease the amount of trauma that is happening at that uh, patella tendon. So what I do is I say, listen, we need to let this rest, but we're going to do it with relative rest. We're not going to let you become deconditioned. 
All right. So what we did with this young lady because of uh, a high copay and, and high deductible, it was going to be quite expensive to continue in formal physical therapy, and they opted not to do that. So we placed her into a strength and conditioning program with one of our strength and conditioning specialists. We gave very strict instructions to avoid deep squatting, um, aggressive open chain knee extension activities. We, we talked about holding off on any jumping. And then we focused on core stability and increasing abductor strength along with, which I feel is the number one cause of this in many uh, young adults, is improving gastroc soleus flexibility and improving dorsiflexion. Because watching her squat was atrocious. Um, her feet would collapse in, her knees would collapse in, therefore increasing the Q angle and a strong lateral pull at the tibial tubercle. Okay, so um, what we did is we put her into temporary orthotics, we supported her arches, improved her gastroc soleus mobility, worked on the faulty biomechanics because remember there are several reasons why people don't get better. Number one is a bad diagnosis um, and then number two is faulty biomechanics. So we work on the faulty biomechanics and over the course of several months and significant training she did very very well. So we held her off on soccer. She jumped into the basketball season and is doing extremely well. She's pain free at this point, um, running up and down the court. She's not being limited by her knee pain and so Getting this rest was important, but it wasn't bed rest. It's what we call relative rest. We strengthen the rest of the body, continue cardiovascular conditioning, but we don't stress the quads too hard and put too much tension on the patella tendon. Now, here's one thing I want to warn people about. If they continue on through this Osgood slaughter situation and this chronic inflammation and pulling at the tibial tubercle, they can develop this exostosis, this bony bump. And this is not from evidence-based practice here, okay? I'll be the first to tell you that. I do a lot of my stuff off of experience. I've been at this for 25 years. And what I see down the road is a significant loss of quality of life with people who have Osgood slaughters in the fact that they cannot kneel anymore because this bony outgrowth is sharp, okay? It's right under the skin. There's no fat. There's no muscle there to absorb the shock. And so what happens is they cannot kneel or put pressure on that area. And if they ever get it hit, it's quite painful. And so I always explain this to patients and their parents when they're young about the importance of resting these and letting them heal. Usually they outgrow these. When their growth plates close, they start to feel better and everything gets better. But down the road, they can have some debilitation. The other thing I do to try to treat these is I try to pad them. I use a nice little knee pad to help cushion that so they don't take any trauma or take a blow to the area. I'm also a big advocate of using some sort of a, um, a patella tracking brace, something that has a pad that you can put between the patella, the inferior pole of the patella, and the insertion. So it acts as a counterforce, almost like you would use uh, with a tennis elbow type uh, situation. So we try to take some pressure off of that tibial tubercle so it's not pulling so hard and uh, we work on optimizing flexibility, improve those faulty biomechanics, protect it with a pad, and they seem to do well. But again, really, from experience, rest is the key. These people don't get better until their growth plates close. So once they get back to function, we allow them to slowly you know, build up their endurance, work on their strength, and then get back to quadricep strengthening and, and uh, a full series of sports-specific or functional type activity. So that is Osgood Slaughter's, uh, Slaughter's short and sweet. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to come to the website, ask me some questions. I would love it if you would uh, drop a review and rate us on iTunes. That would be awesome. If you do, I'll give you a shout out the next time we have a, a podcast episode. We're going to be doing these weekly. And uh, any comments or feedback would be absolutely appreciated. Thanks again for hanging around. Uh, this is Paul from the Ortho Valpal podcast, and uh, have a great day. Take care. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and for more awesome content, go to orthoevalpal.com. Can't wait to see you there.